Well, hi, everybody. Welcome to Nowy's Dive Team Report. I'm your host, Greg Martin. Before we get started today, I wanted to share a quick note that I just received this morning from Peter, the last name I can't pronounce. Uh, Peter is in Hungary, and he's one of the Nowy Dive Team members over there. Uh, Peter says he loves the podcast and is sharing it with all of his fellow divers in Budapest. And I'd like to say thanks to uh, Peter for sharing that. And it's uh, great to hear from him other Nowy divers all around the world. And I'd love to hear your comments. You can email me at podcast at nowy.org. And Peter, keep diving. I appreciate that. So now on to today's podcast. We've talked a bit about the upcoming Nowy ICUE or IQ during the Long Beach Scuba Show coming up May 6th and 7th. Back when it began, the IQ was the forerunner of pretty much all of today's scuba conferences and scuba shows, including the DEMA show. And it was attended by pretty much everybody in the industry, regardless of what their certification agency was or level. Uh, This is the marking of the return of the IQ after a number of years of being absent. And we've been talking with some of the people who were around back then and uh, part of the original IQs. So we've uh, we've tapped Sherry Boone on the uh, shoulder. Sherry is now a number 4851, which uh, mine's a lot bigger than that. Sherry, but that's okay. Uh, <laughs> Sherry that's helped. Okay. She helped present several of the IQ events back in the seventies and early eighties, and she's been a a diver for uh, what nigh on forty plus years there. And I'm excited yeah. to have Sherry on the show. Sherry, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Well, of course. What is it uh, that that brought you to diving in the first place? I mean, you sort of told me a little bit of this story, but uh, give me the uh, Reader's Digest version. What uh, what brought you to diving? I really enjoyed watching Sea Hunt and all the intrigue that happened there underwater. And I also had two small children that were driving me a little crazy, so I needed an escape, and diving fit the bill. I was certified... Um, in a college course, and just progress from there. It's been part of my life since 1975. And you're 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 obviously a a girl too. Uh, did girls dive back then? Not many of us. <laughs> I, it, <laughs> we had to really want it in order to do it. When I finally became an instructor, uh, I had a chance to work as an editor on Nowy News, which is what Sources was called back in the 70s. Right. And one of the first articles I wrote was about women in diving and the instructors in the world. And this is before computers. And so I took all of the instructor applications and I went through them, really did a survey, and I found out that there were only 400 active Nowy female instructors in 1978, I think it was. Wow. That's it, 400. And they were all over the world. And eventually, we all met at IQ. Not all of us, but a lot of us. And just formed some nice bonds and had a chance to exchange ideas on how to get along in the world and how to make diving better. It is a sport that anyone can do. I was doing a presentation, I guess, on uh, scuba diving, and it was a it was a mixed group of kids that were probably you know eight to ten or twelve or something like that. And I had this this beautiful little girl that was sitting in the front row, and she just was wrapped, you know, just her attention was focused on everything I said. And uh, you know, I finally asked for questions, and she raised her hand and she said, "Can girls do this too?" And I just <laughs> really, it was like, of course, of course, absolutely. And uh, talk a little bit to Cherry about uh, about the original IQs back then. And uh, it was kind of an everybody, everybody come, right? Correct. There, the IQs in the 70s were before computers. And so all of the information was either mailed out or you got your buddies to... Um, join you, and we would all meet and have a, a really good time. Um, the the IQ presentations themselves ranged on absolutely every topic you could imagine. And back in the late 70s and 80s, there were a lot of people that were young, very young, just coming into the world of diving. Um, people like Jeff Bazanik or and Dan Orr. Um, Carl Huggins and Craig Barshinger had just discovered the um, tables or managed the tables 
for a dive computer. We had um, Mike Lang, who was still wet behind the ears and went on to the Smithsonian. Just a number of people that used IQ as a, a jump board to get into the diving industry. Um, and when I look back on those years, I think what a wonderful thing that was. And it should be another wonderful thing now. Um, I don't want this to sound like a commercial, but if diving is going to go forward, we have to have young people show us some new information. They have to be able to go and explore. They have to be able to go and come up with new ideas to make diving safer, to make teaching easier, to just propel the diving industry into what it used to be. I do want to ask you, though, kind of a sort of an out there question. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. you, you've, you've been part of the dive industry now, like, like I have for, you know, 40, 40 plus years now. And we've seen a lot of things come and go, uh, good things, bad things. Where do you see the dive industry in, say, the next 20 years? Well, that's a good question. I think that right now, the youth of America, since I have grandchildren, um, they're used to having more things given to them on a plate. They don't work as hard as they used to. And this isn't everybody, but, but your general middle class, upper class kids, they are used to instant gratification. They're used to their iPhones. They're used to Xbox. All that stuff is instant. And somehow or other, we have to get them out of the electronic world and into the real world of water and diving. And I think that's going to be instrumental in keeping a a vibrant diving society because the people that are 20 and 30 now, they're going to be 50 and 60 in a couple 20 years. And And some of us probably aren't going to be around. So you need to encourage younger kids to get into diving. If not, then I think that the diving industry will be a very small sport. Well, we've seen that. We've seen that, the, the dwindling of the of the industry. And your words echo pretty much what everybody else has been saying, too, is that we just really need to see that, that influx of, of youth. Uh, one of the problems I see with the influx of youth is, as you mentioned, they're looking to be handed things more. And, and, and again, not, not across the board, but we've sort of seen that. Do you see that the industry is is backing off on standards to become certified to placate that? Yes, actually, I do. And I think it's been going on for many, many years. Um, I've been, well, I taught my own children to dive when they were 12 years old. That was a standard. You could learn to dive when you were 12, as long as you had an adult with you. And in looking at that 12-year-old and then the 14-year-old and the 16-year-old, Their ability to handle stress in emergency situations, um, the 12-year-old and the 16-year-old just don't compare. A 14-year-old, you think can handle it, but it can't. I've actually had, unfortunately, the experience of talking to a NAWI instructor um, who was using his 14-year-old son to help him with diving classes, deep diving classes. And I said, he's too young. You don't need to do that. You need to give him some more exposure before you put him in a situation. Unfortunately, he didn't listen, and both he and his son died in a deep water accident. And you have to understand, as you get, as kids get older, their, um, their brain changes and their hormones change and all that stuff goes. But a 12-year-old does not think like a 16-year-old. A 12-year-old does not think like an adult. And they can't process things as quickly. They only remember a few things, like I was told to stay on the the hang line. I can't go up because I'll I'll blow up. I'll have an embolism. Well, they in that situation of either running out of air or going up, the child should have gone up, but he chose to stay in the line and he drowned. And his father drowned finding him. Um, that's a hard lesson to learn, and I don't think a lot of people know that. But people need to take a good look at the standards. A seven-year-old on a handheld dive at 10 feet, maybe. But don't let them go beyond that. 
Um, you can interest people in other ways. Give them the skills to skin dive. Give them the skill to enjoy the water. Let them flap around on top while mom and dad are under the, the ocean. But don't jeopardize a child's health or his his ability to enjoy oceans because he was given it too early and thinks it's not a special treasure. It is. You can take a look at the oceans now and you can take a look at the ocean. Well, I can, I can remember the ocean 20 or 30 years ago, and it's nothing like it was back then. We used to have a lot of fish and wildlife and everything, and society is demolishing that rapidly. So um, that sounds really gloomy, doesn't it? <laughs> and I don't mean to be like that, but we really need to we really need to stand up and say, look, you know, there's a certain time of when a when a child can learn how to snorkel. There's a certain time when a child can learn how to scuba dive. There's a certain time when a a um, teenager can be independent in the water. And you need to take a look at that. As far as older people, you know, like in their 20s or 30s diving, you need to get make sure that they understand the, the, the laws of physics. Those don't change for anybody. It, it's a law for a reason, because if you don't follow it, you get hurt. And I think because of society nowadays, the... Um, the ability for people to understand consequences is not as great as it was a while ago because you can just blow by it. You can text it. You can Instagram it. You can do whatever you want. And there's such there's so much information coming at them that it may get lost. Let's talk just a, a minute about IQ again before we get off of this. Uh, sure. what, what would you suggest for people when they come to IQ? How, how should they approach going to this year's IQ? I would get a look at the program. I would say, what interests me? Find topics that interest them. Go sit in those sessions and learn. There's some workshops. Do a workshop. Try something new in a workshop. Um, and just enjoy being with other people. One of the big things about IQ in the past it was a place where we could meet people that we would only see once a year. But we would have a great time. We would be able to dance and have dinner and enjoy each other's company, just talk about diving, tell wild stories. That's part of what diving used to be, and hopefully it still is part of what diving is now. But the camaraderie of diving instructors and divers in general is a big heritage of IQ, and that's very important for Nowy. It's it's people really like a... me wouldn't. Yeah, people like me wouldn't still be praising Nowy if we didn't think that there was value in it, and IQ is one of those values. It's really a small industry, and it it's it's interesting that um, you, we talked earlier about the the people that we've met over the years, and uh, you know are now a part of our lives because of things like the IQ and now DEMA and so forth. And uh, again, mm -hmm. it's it's just kind of a small industry and getting to know all the people is it's really fun to, to build those relationships. And that's part of what IQ should be for you. Exactly. It, it's um, a tradition that I hope now he is able to continue with so that divers in this generation and future generations can look back 20 or 30 years from now and go, you know, I met this person every year or I met this group of divers every year and we had such a good time comparing what was happening in the Northwest with Southern California or Florida or the Bahamas and we enjoyed each other's company. And that's, that's what friends are in diving. You don't just have to, you don't just have to dive with them every day but you can experience things with other divers. If you go on a dive trip, you've got a built-in buddy there, or at least they can set you in a, a path where you know you'll be safe. And those relationships that you and friends that you make at an IQ help you to learn more about diving.
I echo that all the way, all the way. Well, this uh, it's been an awful lot of fun uh, checking on things that uh, have happened in the past and uh, looking forward to what may happen in the future. I do urge you that if you are thinking about attending the uh, the Naui IQ, that you you go on to uh, Naui's website, naui.org. Be sure and check out things. I know that uh, part of the festivities are going to be happening on board the Queen Mary down there for the kickoff. And if you need tickets, you should check out Again, Nowie.org. Uh, last week on the program, Angie gave us a, a special website, and I don't have that in here in front of me, but I'll be make sure that we post that. If you just go to the Nowie website, I know that you can find it off of there. And if you're interested in diving, of course, be sure and check out uh, Nowie.org, your, your local Nowie dive shop, or, or any dive shop for that matter. Uh, Sherry, I want to say thanks for spending some time and uh, talking old times and new times and uh, just diving in general. I always appreciate it. Thank you, and I have really enjoyed doing this. Hopefully, we'll see everybody at IQ. Sounds great. And that's going to wrap it up for this episode of Nowy's Dive Team Report. Hey, if you do enjoy the podcast, please subscribe on iTunes and Google Play so that you don't miss a single episode. And please, if you like what you hear, Give us that five-star rating. Give us a positive review. And, of course, love to hear comments from you directly. Again, my uh, email address, podcast at nowie.org. I'm Greg Martin. Thanks for listening to Nowie's Dive Team Report. And I'll see you underwater. Underwater.